Hi everybody, my name is John Selders. Uh, I'm known with lots of titles. I am Bishop John Selders. Um, I'm pastor of Amistad United Church of Christ in the city of Hartford. Uh, I am also uh, assistant dean of students at Trinity College here in Hartford, Connecticut. And I am co-founder of Moral Monday, Connecticut, Moral Monday CT. And guess what I want to tell you is a little bit about our story and how Moral Monday came to be. Uh, one Saturday morning, uh, after watching uh, my favorite uh, political talk show at the time uh, uh, on cable news network, I shut the TV off. And as is my practice, I, uh, as most preachers do, we got to have some sermon preparation time. And so Saturday mornings and Saturdays uh, in particular, but Saturday mornings are my finishing uh, hour. And so I'd begun to think about how and what I might say uh, to God's people on Sunday morning uh, and uh, got a text from my brother, um, a brother, a friend brother uh, from St. Louis. He was at that moment in California, Northern California. He sent me a text. He said, uh, the crib is on fire, dot, 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 Ferguson. Now, what you don't know, um, but, but my, my family and friends know, I'm from St. Louis. And so um, Ferguson is a nearing suburb of St. Louis. And in fact, I'm from the town just west of Ferguson, uh, the first incorporated town in the state of Missouri for African-Americans. It's called Kinlock, and that's my home. I was born in a Jewish hospital <laughs> in St. Louis, and they tell me I was taken from Jewish hospital to 5601, McHenry at the corner of Hugo and McHenry in Kinlock. And so when uh, um, my buddy texted me to say that uh, the crib was on fire, he was saying hometown was in turmoil. Um, I, I turned on the TV um, moments after receiving the text and having the exchange with my buddy. Oh, by the way, he's the Reverend Osaji Fuseku. Some of you might know him. Uh, and um, I saw the images coming from the, 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 my hometown, uh, just like you did. The, 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 the militarized police, the tanks, the tear gas, and all of the, the, the goings on um, that took place in the aftermath of the, 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 gun, the gunning down of 18-year-old Michael Brown Jr. Uh, in August uh, of 2014. I immediately um, be, began to receive texts from and calls from home. My mother, uh, my mother-in-law, may she rest in peace. Uh, Son, you, are you coming home? Um, uh, and friends and others. Um, I pastored in St. Louis. I grew up in St. Louis. I'm a third generation classically trained Pentecostal preacher, born and raised in, in St. Louis. So, 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 and had begun my activism and begun uh, the ministry in St. Louis. So it was in, in destined to be for me uh, and for my wife. My, my wife was born in St. Louis. My children were born in St. Louis. And so uh, during that late summer and into the fall and winter, we were back and forth from here, Hartford, Connecticut, to St. Louis and were involved in many of the actions uh, and the protest and the goings on uh, in St. Louis. And having uh, just come back home, uh, from a recent trip there. We were home during the, the non-indictment announcements of both um, Darren Wilson, uh, who was the, the police officer involved in the shooting of Mike Brown in St. Louis, and also um, the uh, uh, non-indictment announcement that happened in the Eric Garner's case. Many of you may or may not remember that those two announcements happened one week apart from each other. And so uh, we were there on the ground in, in what many call um, that rarefied air of the protest front. And so we'd come back to uh, Hartford and had been invited by a number of our colleagues and friends who were activists and um, social justice folk who wanted to know what was going on. They wanted the fresh word from the front line of, of, of the movement, if you will. And um, um, we began to talk about uh, in, in what ways could we um, uh, avert maybe uh, the same thing happening 
uh, here in Hartford that was happening uh, in Ferguson at that time. And before we got too far down into that conversation, I turned around um, and, and said to my colleagues, listen, I'm, I'm not willing to do the same things we've always done. Uh, when was it that we didn't meet with, you know, whoever the founding people, the, the, the city leaders, uh, and something might change for a little bit, but then it would be like elastic. It would go right back to the way things uh, have always been. And so we needed a new tact. We needed a new direction. We needed to do something different. And so I, I said, let's use what we've had in, in our toolkit all along the way, protest and arrest and, 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 and really begin to have um, conversations in the public square about the, the, the overreach and the violence uh, in black communities and black spaces uh, in our cities, not just here in Hartford, uh, but in the cities in and around uh, Connecticut. And so that was the very beginning and the birth of what we now call Moral Monday CT. Uh, this organization that, that, that took to making the link uh, between the Black Lives Matter and the movement for black lives. And we linked it uh, to the, the, the overarching uh, social justice movement that had begun to happen under the direction and the leadership of my dear friend and brother, um, the Reverend Dr. Bishop, uh, William Barber in North Carolina. This social justice activism linked to the movement for black lives. That's where we, 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 we live at that nexus. And our work centers around social justice, racial justice, and, and of course, police accountability and, and, and overreach. Mm -hmm.